I'm sure like most of you guys out there, we have big dreams as sneakerheads to want to work for Nike and Jordan brand. So why did I turn down a job at Nike headquarters when I had the opportunity to? You'll find out in this video. Hey, what is going on guys? This is Hats from CollectiveKicks.com. I wanted to bring you guys this story time video, just a little sneaker story about an opportunity that I turned down working at Nike headquarters when I had the chance to back in the day. And I figured I'd share it with you guys because ultimately everything ended up working out for me in the end, regardless. It's just, it, it's kind of fun to think what could have happened if I would have gone that other route and worked for the dream job, the dream company that I've always wanted to work at at Nike. So I'm sure some of you guys can relate to this a little bit, but after high school, I really didn't know how I was going to be able to get a job or go to college or pay for college and all those types of things. I didn't really have too much of a direction right out of high school. I didn't take my SATs. So it was really kind of difficult for me to try to determine my future path. The only thing I did know is I wanted to work at Nike. I ended up working a full-time job just doing catering at a corporation that IBM actually ended up buying out. There was like over a hundred conference rooms on this campus of IBM in Beaverton, Oregon. The funny part about this is it was literally across the street from Nike headquarters. And now actually Nike owns all of the, that property. And I, since then I've gone back and actually DJed on the same properties that I used to work at at IBM that Nike now owns. So it's crazy how things kind of come full circle. But back to the story though, I ended up catering for these company meetings and there's a hundred plus conference rooms all over these buildings. I would just go around to the conference rooms and bring them their lunch and their breakfasts and their snacks or whatever it was. It wasn't a very glorious job, but at the end of the day, it was a job that I could make ends meet. And I had a little bit of financial freedom at that point in my life, uh, working a nine to five and only going to college part-time at night. So during my, my time at IBM, I ended up moving on from the catering world. But since I knew all of the conference rooms, I actually moved into another position that ended up opening up, which was an audio visual technician. I basically set up conference rooms for people the way that they needed to for their meetings. I brought them like overhead projectors back then, those were really big still, TVs and stuff if they needed them in the rooms. And I basically just set up conference rooms and, and made sure everything was in order for all of these rooms. It's kind of crazy how this actually ended up segueing into what would have been at Nike. I did this job with some pride, you know, I was a young kid. Um, like not even 20 years old at this point. What ended up happening was I ended up wanting to know more about how other companies maintain their conference rooms and how they actually do this same sort of stuff at other companies. And Nike was right across the street. So this is where Nike comes into play. I literally walked across the street and I went into the Jerry Rice building and I asked somebody, I said, hey, who do you have like that does your audio visual like setups and stuff in the con conference rooms and whatnot around um, Nike because I I run everything over at IBM across the street and I just wanted to, to like brainstorm with them and see how they do it and see if I can do things more efficiently at my current company. And it, it was crazy because they actually put me in, in contact with the right person. Uh, the guy's name was Alan. I still remember to this day. He was a great guy. So I met with Alan casually over lunch and we just talked about how they run their processes. He showed me some of their conference rooms and it was really cool to be able to go over to Nike headquarters and look at all their conference rooms and see how they run everything. It's a much larger scale than the stuff that we did even at IBM. So the AV team over at Nike actually took care of a lot of the major uh, events that happen on campus. You know, there's a lot of big name athletes signed to Nike and Jordan brand. So anytime that they came to campus and they had a Q and A thing and they sat down and talked about their new products to the internal staff, uh, the AV team would set up that those meetings and run the audio visual and uh, also set up the microphones and, and just make sure that the mic levels are good for all that stuff. And that's more or less what they did on a larger scale at their company. And I was really intrigued by this. So fast forward a couple months later, there was a position that opened up that was under Alan's team. Alan called me up and said, hey, there's a position open on my team. I'd love you for you to come out and apply for this job. So the fact that I had an internal person referring me to the job and it would be reporting to him. It was like an automatic in. So I applied for the position. I had some phone interviews and then I had in-person interviews and they actually had me a written offer. Now, if you don't know, to get a written offer from Nike takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time, a lot of times actually to even get an in-person interview. Most of the time they'll, they'll do the phone screenings and they won't ever get to the point where you actually show up. I've been, since then I've been interviewed twice at Nike for just other random jobs but I've never made it to the next round of actually 
getting another contract in front of me, one that I was able to sign or not sign. So I actually got the offer papers in hand and I was reviewing the contract, but I did have some questions that came up. The annual salary was actually higher than what I was getting at IBM just by a little bit, but Nike was not gonna be paying for my college classes. They said it had to pertain to the role that you were in. So for me, it would be like an audio visual like type college. And that wasn't necessarily where I wanted to be long-term. I knew I wanted to finish my degree in business and that's the direction I wanted to go. While I was working at IBM, I was going to college part-time as I mentioned, but IBM was also reimbursing me from those classes. So that was honestly the deal breaker for me. Knowing the future that I wanted to have needed a college degree behind it, I really didn't want to have a focused college degree like with just like an AV type role. I wanted it to be more mainstream. So at the end of the day, I knew what I needed and Nike at that time wasn't offering what I needed. And so I actually had to turn down the role because of the college uh, reimbursement, which was the major factor for me. The other thing that got interesting was IBM actually offered me more money than I was making previously and more money than what Nike was offering me. They max salaried me at my position on top of paying for my college instead of having me leave uh, with all of the knowledge that I had in, in the position I was at uh, to go to Nike. So it really helped me determine to stay where I was at. And that's why I ended up keeping the job at IBM instead of going to Nike. This is where it gets tragic though, because I ended up staying at IBM, working my way up to another position, and then I ended up getting laid off. And it wasn't just a personal thing with me just getting laid off. They laid off half of the people at the campus, unfortunately. And you know, it's what happens when major companies buy out smaller companies sometimes. They bought our technology, and then all of a sudden they wash their hands with the business and, uh, and, and close the doors on half of the business on site. It was definitely unfortunate because I stayed at a company that ultimately let me go when I could have worked at Nike, but who knows where my future would have been if I would have stayed at Nike. It could have been bright, it could have been really, really dim, and I could have got laid off there. You just, you never really know where life is gonna take you. As a result of me getting laid off from IBM, I ended up going back to college full-time, found some roommates uh, that were in Oregon State, and I ended up moving into a house with 10 people total. And it was a crazy house, 10 people living in one house. It was a six bedroom house, and uh, it was a lot of fun. It definitely started my college career. That's when everything totally took off in a different direction in my life. I started DJing down there. I met a ton of people DJing the nightclubs down there, whom now I still DJ like weddings and stuff from all my referrals that I had from the college days in the, in the nightclub scene. Because I was working in the nightclub scene, I made so much extra revenue that I actually ended up starting to collect and buy more sneakers for myself. And that's when I really started collecting in 03. And since then, that's when it just got crazy. And like before I started YouTube, I had hundreds of pairs of sneakers in my collection just because I was just an avid sneaker lover still. So even though I wasn't working at Nike, I was still supporting the product. Who knows what could have been if I would have stayed at, at Nike. And you know, maybe the passion for sneakers would have fizzled and I wouldn't have liked them as much because once you're on the inside, I think that the passion dies a little bit. When you're on the outside and you're seeing all the stuff that's being produced, then you have fresh eyes on stuff like, like the Vapor Max and stuff like that. Like I knowing that this could have been happening three years before it releases or wear testing these, it wouldn't have had as big of an impact, I don't think, once they actually released. So for me personally, I think it's great that I've been on the outside and being able to appreciate the, the products that Nike brings. The other thing is that I've been able to appreciate other brands, Saucony for sure, Adidas also, Asics. Like there's so many other great brands out there that I'm able to experience because I'm not forced into just buying my Nikes and my Jordans, which also lets me be able to do a YouTube channel because if I was a Nike employee, I wouldn't be able to do a, a YouTube channel on my products that I'm buying from Nike or you know Adidas or anything like that. So, so that's pretty much it. That's kind of my story on how I could have worked at Nike, decided against it, and now I'm here in front of you guys, which is cool. It's crazy because you really don't know the path that life is gonna lead you in. And for me, I really didn't have a clue and it was crazy how I'm able to get to the point where I'm at now. And I, you know, life is definitely good. I have my, my nine to five. I do my YouTube as a side business. I do my DJing as a side business. I have a wonderful family. I'm just really, really blessed and really, really happy. Ultimately, fate takes over at some point and whatever is meant to be is meant to be. Anyways, that is the story for you guys and hopefully you guys liked the video. If you guys did, hit the thumbs up button. Maybe leave a comment and let me know what is your dream job at this point in your life. You know. I still don't know what I want to do when I grow up. And so if there's people out there that feel that same exact way, and either you're in middle school, grade school, high school, or you're an adult in your fifth job, 
Like it's okay not to have a, have an idea exactly what you want to do in life. You just have to do your part and work hard and show up and, and showing up is 80% of the battle. So hopefully you guys enjoyed though. I appreciate you all for watching. If you guys do like the content, subscribe to the channel and we will catch you for more sneaker videos soon. Peace guys.